A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ impels us who have reached the conviction that since one died for all, all died. He died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised up. Because of this, we no longer look on anyone in terms of mere human judgment. If at one time we so regarded Christ, we no longer know him by this standard. This means that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old order has passed away. Now all is new. All this has been done by God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I mean that God, in Christ, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's transgressions against them, and that he has entrusted the message of reconciliation to us. This makes us ambassadors for Christ. God is, it were, appealing through us. We implore you, in Christ's name, be reconciled to God. For our sakes, God made him who did not know sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the very holiness of God. The word of the Lord. and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will you always be known upon earth, and all nations learn your salvation. The nations be glad and shout for joy. With a brightness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on earth. yielded its fruit, for God our God has blessed us. May God still give us his blessing, that all the ends of the earth may revere him.
teach them to carry out everything I have commanded you, says the Lord. Dominus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority to overcome all demons and to cure diseases. He set them forth to proclaim the reign of God and heal the afflicted. Jesus advised them, take nothing for the journey, neither walking staff nor traveling bag, no bread, no money. No one is to have two coats. Stay at whatever house you enter and proceed from there. When people will not receive you, leave that town and shake its dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, spreading the good news everywhere and curing diseases. Verbum Domini. In the history of the church, we see many renowned preachers and teachers. And these men and women have had a gift of persuading people, touching hearts and winning them over to Jesus Christ. And one person who did such thing and, and is often forgotten is St. Lawrence of Brindisi. Brindisi. So St. Lawrence of Brindisi was, was a very powerful, influential preacher and teacher. People listened to him. He opened their eyes and their ears and their hearts to God's word. And as the message came forth, people were often converted, turning to God, turning from sinful ways. And a big part of this, uh, of his success and his effectiveness, is due to, his, of course, his love of God, but his humility. He was such a humble servant of God. And this is something that we all, of course, need to grow in, humility. So in growing in humility, we become more effective servants of the Lord. We can even love the Lord and our neighbor more than, than we think we can. And so we, today we, we look to the example of, of this great saint, Franciscan, Capuchin, and also doctor of the church, St. Lawrence of Brindisi. So the humble man, St. Lawrence, he lived... Um, in the later 1500s, okay, and uh, at about the age of 20, he joined the Capuchin order, and immediately they recognized that this man was brilliant, a genius. He could be a great scholar. So, of course, you know, he, he studied and was learned. For him, it was easy to acquire knowledge of languages. He became an expert in the biblical languages, an expert in sacred scripture. And from there, as he was ordained a priest, he became a very influential teacher, especially in, in training uh, Capuchin friars or, or priests. 
And, you know, people recognized his talents and the effectiveness of, of his teaching and preaching that eventually, you know, this, this spread, there was so, so much word of mouth about this that, that the Pope learned about it. The Pope called him over to Rome and to, uh, teach, to teach Jews. At that time, the Jewish people, uh, they, because of uh, Roman law or the, the mandates of that time, they, they had to receive uh, Christian instruction. And, the, uh, and so Lawrence of Brindensey was assigned to teach them. Now, of course, you know, this wasn't always welcomed by the Jewish people in that era. You know, they, they hold on to their own beliefs and, you know, they didn't want to be forced to listen to Christian teaching. But yet Lawrence, in his humility, was able to reach them and able to, to capture their attention. So he was very, very persuasive and they liked to listen to them and especially him knowing the, the biblical languages so well, he, the, the language of Hebrew, was able to identify with them. You know, he was like almost like a, he was a Jew himself preaching to other Jews. He understood them so well. So many of them converted as a result of him. Another one of his accomplishments was that because he was such a renowned speaker and, and teacher that many, many people in, in leadership roles often went to him for counsel. And, and you know, he was very wise as well. Uh, a, a, over time, he was uh, assigned to be uh, general, uh, ch general chaplain, chaplain general. Of, uh, of, the, of the, papal, uh, the papal forces, the papal army. And remember that uh, it was, it was a, this was the era of, um, during the Ottoman Empire. And though that they, you, you recall the huge battle of, of Lepanto around 1571, however, you know, there was, there was a great victory for the Christians, but there were many small battles that followed afterward. Well, in the, in the later 1500s, they had trouble recruiting men to serve in these armies and in the, in the, in these uh, navies of, of, the, of the crusaders. And then once they acquired them, the, the morale was very low. So being that Lawrence was, was such a, a powerful speaker and teacher, they called upon him and made him uh, general chaplain. And of course, he was able to boost the morale. Of course, you, you know, speaking the word of God, giving them confidence, building up their faith. And there were, many, uh, there, there, were, there, were many, there were many victories as a result of him building up their, their confidence and, and their faith in God. Another thing was is that he was later uh, made the, um, the, Cap the Capuchin General, the Minister General of the Order. But as we see here, he is, he's very accomplished. You know, he wrote much as well. But, you know, he, he, was, he was so effective and impacted so many because he was so humble. Well, well how does this work? You know, we often view the humble as, as weak. You know, people who may get stepped on or, or pushed around a lot. But that's not how humility works. Humility, first of all, begins with truth, with knowing, well, what things really are seeing things as they really are. And that includes ourselves. Now, many times we, we you know, may struggle with humility because of, of the way we think of ourselves. Often, we may get into fantasies thinking that we're more than we, ought, than we are. You know, or we may become arrogant or haughty. See, and, and once we, we give into that, you know, of course, we're, we're not humble anymore. But then what, what's happening here is that we're so caught up in ourselves that we forget about the other, we forget who we're serving, God, but we forget about the people that we are serving as well. See, and, and the example of Lawrence is that he, he was always very considerate and very polite, very, very, very courteous. 
that he, he was very sympathetic and empathetic to the needs of the people he was preaching to. So it wasn't about, about him, you know, showing off his, his brilliance and exhibiting his, his knowledge. No, it was more about how do I get this message across? So he often spoke with very simple words in, in, a way, in ways people could understand, you know, using uh, various examples, uh, very analogies, and, 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 and other teaching methods like that. And so th this is why he was so, so persuasive. And, and this is what, what we need to know for ourselves. You know, we, we need to know the truth about ourselves, who we are, who we're not, yeah, and, and accept that. So we'll accept that, well, hey, you know what, I have these certain weaknesses, yeah, I have them, and we don't want to beat ourselves down over them, but we want to work on them. You know, it's also good to know our strengths as well, to have some self-knowledge. Remember the words of St. Augustine, Lord, help me to, to know myself so that I may know you, because often we ourselves get in the way of knowing God. While true humility helps us to know who we really are so that we can know God, we can know the mind of God and think as he thinks, just as St. Lawrence had done. And we recall also the, and, and also recall the example of, of Jesus. I mean, we see this in the, in the life of Jesus very often. Uh, Jesus knew what power, what authority was given to him. I mean, he's God. He's, a, he's the son of God. And, and, and he said that, the son of man, the son of God. You know, he says, and, but he also acknowledged where his power came from. God has given me all authority. The Father has given me everything. I, I act in, in the name of the Father. And so us as well, knowing who we are, you know, and, and, and accepting that in humility. You know, one thing that St. Paul tells us, he says that we, not, that we shouldn't think more of, we shouldn't think very much of ourselves, more than we ought to, more highly than we ought to. Because when we start doing that, then, as, as he says, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but think with sober judgment. And when we think too highly of ourselves, we're not thinking soberly. We're kind of lost somewhere. So, so this, this, is, this is how we do it. You know, well, this is, this is, well, this is the truth. We can think soberly. We can think correctly and rightly. Just, just like we see of Lawrence, of course, like Jesus the Lord, following his example. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord, you know, has so much, so much more he wants to give us. But we got to take ourselves out of the way. You know, humble ourselves. St. Peter tells us, humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. And then he says that in due time, he will exalt you. Following those words, he says, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Meaning there, give it all to God. If we have some troubles, difficulties in, in being humble, you know, maybe, maybe we, were, we were raised to be a little haughty, a little arrogant. Well, give it to God. Ask him for the grace to be more humble, to see things as they, as they really are, to recognize God's power within us. And, and in doing so, you know, again, we become more aware of those who are around us, more sensitive to their needs, that we become uh, more interested in their needs than our own. You know, and, and, and so, so this is what, these are the virtues we, we need to take today as we especially learn from St. Lawrence of Brindensee, but much more from, from the example of Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, do your best to humble yourselves before God, knowing that he's with you, that he loves you, and that he will give you the grace to do all things in him and through him. God bless you all.